So we're going to start off here in a moment with a little bit of a seated, just mindful moment. I know a lot of restorative classes, you may do a little bit of movement at the top of the class. That's not how I teach restorative, not to say I won't ever do that, but we're not doing that today. We'll do some counter poses here and there, but be doing a lot of sloga, and that's why you're here. So was out this chat so I can see everything. Here we go. All right. So if you're not dress nice and warm and take a moment and maybe reach for your blanket or hoodie on or anything like that. We're going to start out in a seated position. If you'd like just what I call not so easy pose, but that's a conversation for another time. Just a, uh, a comfortable seat, maybe with your legs crossed one in front of the other. So here at the top of our workshop, I'm going to take three intentional breaths, drawing them in through the nose. Big sigh out from the mouth. Again, in through the nose. Sigh out. One more just like that, in. And out. Feel the weight ripple through your body from the crown of your head down to the seat. begin reaching out with the awareness into the space in which we have chosen to practice together tonight. Whether that's at home or here in the studio with me, we have all held this space for one another since we last met. Noticing the temperature of the air, the vibration, the energy, the sounds. Invite the sounds that are a little further out. A little, invite them a little closer. There could be voices in the hallway. Maybe footsteps in the apartment above here at the studio. Cars on the road outside of the home. Laughter, love. And in those instances where your awareness might be drawn to something, let it go there. Don't let it linger. And instead of assigning that sound or vibration or laughter, a negative value, invite it in with open arms and say, thank you for letting me know I'm here and connected to this moment. and draw the awareness towards your root chakra. Connected to the earth. The root is our foundation. And invite the awareness from the root up towards the crown of the head, pausing at the heart space. Feeling the love in radiant white and gold light that resides there. And with your next inhale, let the awareness move to the crown of the head.
Take one more breath here. And as you exhale, slowly start to invite a little bit of light in by softening the gaze. Let's take a few circles with the neck in either direction, maybe one or two at your own pace. Mindful to change directions. That pace is encouraged to be very slow. Let's draw that back to a place of stillness. If you're ready, let's take some shoulder moves, rotating the shoulders back and then forward and back again. We'll do that two more times and then change directions. If you've had enough moving of the shoulders, you can change directions or stop altogether. Start to bring that back to stillness and we'll pause for a heartbeat and beat. And we're just gonna twist from our left. Then unravel back to center and move to the right. Let's do that two more times with our own flow. This restorative yoga is not about choreography of movement. It's about slow and loving observation in a place of utter comfort and stillness. And draw the upper body back to a neutral spine. And we'll just take a moment here. And start to allow the eyes to open all the way. So if you have not taken a restorative practice, <clears throat> this will be a double learning experience because it's my first time being fortunate enough to lead one here at Life and Balance. So my format, as some of you may already know, is I break the stage and things like that. Um, so we're gonna do ep expo demo. If you leave your camera, you don't have to have your cameras on. You can turn the camera off if you want to. I will demo with studio props, and then I will talk about other props you may have at home or a setup. We are all tasked with our own comfort. Um, so the first pose that we're going to approach is gonna be our supported child's pose. So you may have noticed behind me I have A set up that I'm going to deconstruct and then build it back up. So for these classes, typically the instructors will do just this. They'll either have it pre-set up or set it up for you. So we're going to, this will be our finished product. You'll notice I have a blanket over a bolster. That's just for some extra cushion. Extra cushion. So this bolster can represent a sturdy cushion or a pillow. The blocks can literally be anything. It could even be a stack of blankets you can use to just lay your cushion over on top of. Blocks could be books, although I would rather just use sturdy blankets. So you don't even have to put this uh, incline. That's a, uh, an, just an option. So you'll see if you're gonna use blocks to create an incline, back to the studio props furthest away block on its highest setting, supporting block, middle setting, and then just lying your cushion over on top of the blocks in whichever manner is gonna offer the most support. You might want to move it a little bit away, a little uh, towards you again, and just check that the blocks are flat. Sometimes it's cool too if you have a wall space that you can build your little ramp on also. So something to consider here when we're gonna be going into the child's pose is your knees. If you have knee concerns, cause I know I do, 
Um, you're not going to stay in the posture the whole time, or you can adjust. We'll go over that in just a second. So that blanket on top was just for some extra comfort and cushioning. So I'm going to approach after I make sure I have no wrinkles, wherever I'm going to lay down for maximum comfort. So you see here, I have a small bolster. This can be represented also by just blankets folded up. They can be big, cushy bed blankets or just blankets. We're going to put the small bolster or blankets behind our seat on the legs. It's going to fill some of that space between your heels and your bum. That, Cause that could also, so you can also just use blankets and put it back there. As far as the knee spacing, wide knee or a little more narrow, depending on the size of the pillow bolster you're laying on, don't take it too wide, just wide enough for comfort. So then lowering down, onto your prop and it just really is going to depend on your physiology how and if um, what kind of layers you're going to put between your seat and your heels maybe just a blanket maybe nothing we'll lower down onto the little ramp we made if we made one or just over onto a pillow and just start to settle the hands and arms and just start to relax, even walking the fingers a little bit further than maybe uh, you start with. So this first minute we spend in silence, unless you've started your playlist, that's fine. If you haven't started it, feel free to go ahead and start it. The first minute is an untimed minute. You'll start to settle into the space of the posture. Begin connecting with the breath. And I will offer this mantra of, well, it's going to be a, a meta mantra. So as you exhale and speak in your mind, I am safe as you exhale. And with the next hail, exhale, I am healthy. And lastly, I am happy. I am safe. I am healthy. I am happy. Inviting with each exhale a release. Letting go of any and all muscular engagement.
you're resting one cheek or the other and you haven't switched, now would be a good time to switch. Resettle. Maybe small adjustments and release. Nice and slowly inviting that awareness back in. If you feel ready, start to move out of your child's pose. Nice and slow and intentional. We're gonna take a full minute of some intuitive movements for our bodies. You can move props off to the side. And I'd like for each yogi to just listen to whatever their body is telling them. Maybe some cat cows would feel good. Just make sure you do any movements very slowly. Cat cows, maybe a downward facing dog. So while restorative yoga even has rest in the name, and falling asleep is not at all a bad thing. We'll do this little bit of movement to sort of wake the body up so we can be aware and present when we're in uh, each of these postures. So about another three breaths or a half minute. 
And then we'll start to get ourselves set up for the next pose. If you're ready, you can feel free to um, bring that back towards stillness if you were still moving. And we'll get ourselves, start to move in the direction of setting up. For this next pose, um, props are gonna be all optional. Yes, all optional. One thing I'm gonna demo though is if you're going to use a rolled up blanket, we're going to be placing a, uh, well, if you choose to, placing maybe a rolled up blanket or a small bolster at the bottom of the mat for our ankles. We're going to be approaching all the way down onto our belly into crocodile pose. Just a moment. And what we're going to end up doing is sort of a modified, um, frog pose. Back it off. So so let me just demo the pose real quick. Pardon me. Well I make sure I'm not, you know. So we're gonna approach all the way onto the ground. So either our small bolster or rolled up blanket or towel that we have, we're gonna start with the left leg. It's the easiest for me to demo. So we're gonna leave our right ankle, top of the right ankle lifted onto a prop, either a blanket or a small bolster. Um, if you want, you don't have to. So starting out from a Sphinx pose, we're going to look back to the left and we're going to lift the left leg so that it's more or less coming out straight from the hip with the knee bent for this modified frog pose. And then we'll lower all the way down onto the forehead. So you can rest the forehead on a blanket, which I highly encourage. Just a little padding. Just for you, we're lifting the right leg just a little bit. It just offers the body a different perspective in this long-held restful pose. So I will also offer to switch cheeks if you rest a cheek onto your prop or not. This won't be as long a hold, but we're doing both sides. So start to settle in. When you're ready, lowering all the way down. You might find that opening the elbows or moving the elbows up towards the direction of the top of the mat a little bit lifts the underarm and that can be a little more comfortable depending if you are not a belly sleeper. Um, let me know, especially if you're virtual, like if this is not something that works for you and I will give a different posture for you, no problem. into the space here and find the breath and just rest. Letting go of all that tension in the muscles.
looking at the body and the breath just for a moment. Start to slowly lengthen and deepen the breath. You are us back into the bottom. Very slowly, start to move the arms so the elbows are beneath the shoulders. In the upper body into sort of a sphinx pose, then looking back, send the left leg back towards straight. You can 
you opted for that little bit of a rolled blanket or anything, you can move it off to the side. Slowly lifting ourselves up. Taking some cat cows and a tabletop very slowly. I'm going to take about three more breaths before we start to transition to the opposite side. So if you're ready, you can draw that movement back to stillness and start to settle down. Lying all the way on the belly. that right knee up from the side. You may want to press the foot on something. Need the breath. Being aware of this body shape. Perhaps from the tips of the fingers down to the tips of your toes. Shows that. It's just noticing any areas in the body you can soften. 10 to 15% more.
Simply reaching out, pulling that awareness back into your body. Moving from your feet to your hands, very slowly. As you're ready, send that right leg back towards straight. Draw those hands in, let's press up through tabletop. Back into a child's pose, tuck your toes. Lengthen out the arms. Slowly, you can bring yourself back up towards a tabletop. And take a few moments here to take any intuitive movements for your body. I find that sometimes more appreciated than not to just be able to move. To just take a few moments, stretch your legs out. Invite a little a bit of awakening in your body so you can pay attention during our next postures. So we will once again uh, continue uh, your independent movement. We're going to lie down on our front body again and then onto the side. We're going to take a side lying version of a corpse pose. So you'll definitely need or want to have um, pillows, bolster, blankets handy. So I'll just demo this and then everyone can take a moment and start to get in to your version of this. So I'm gonna choose a big bolster, which could be, you know, big pillow, two pillows stacked, a blanket. We're gonna be resting our uh, from knee down to our ankle on this way and the foot as well. Adjust my little microphone pack. I feel all fancy. So we're going to start out lying on our right side. And remember, if this is not something that's going to work for your practice, just let me know, especially my uh, online yogis. Hit me in the chat. I'm just going to rest the lower leg on some type of soft object, stacked, uh, stacked blankets, bolster pillows. And keep a blanket and or a block handy for your head. So I like to use a block to rest between my shoulder and my cheek, but sometimes that doesn't feel great for as long as we're doing these holds. So put a blanket over your block or just use blankets, make a pillow for your head. It may be easy for me to say as a side sleeper. I'll wrap up the block inside the blanket. Let's pay attention to that space between the ear and the shoulder. Cover up the blanket. Start to get settled. Need more blankie. Everybody needs more blankie. Yoga teacher tucking you in. So everybody at home, I am tucking you in in a not creepy way. Settling with the breath into that space. Definitely want to keep the foot also on the pillow or the bolster. The top arm can just do whatever feels comfortable.
close your eyes. As you exhale, hear those sounds. I am safe. healthy. I'm happy. Starting to invite the awareness back into your body. And breathe just a little bit bigger. So there are a few ways you can exit this pose and transition through center to the opposite side. An intuitive way would be just to remove the top leg from the bolster or the pillow and roll through center, pausing briefly and then moving to your left side in the same setup on the left side as well. Mindful here again. Mindful of that underarms. Lifting the head is gonna give you somewhere to go with your lower arm. 
top leg onto your prop, making sure the foot is not dangling off. And reach over for your blankets. Noticing any areas of the body that are in contact with the ground that maybe you could slide some cushion. those micro adjustments and then sigh out into stillness. Come here, stillness. Softly. Allowing some stirring in the mind and the body. Breathing a little bit deeper.
Same options exist for exhaling posture. Lift the top leg off the bolster nice and slow. Or the pillow. Stack of blankets. So we're going to want to call uh, softly move ourselves into a seated position. We will be lying down on our backs for our final pose, which will be super supported corpse pose. So that definitely will need either your large bolster for behind the thighs or pillow, something to lift the thighs up a little bit. And if you still, if you have a rolled up blanket or a small bolster, this will put down towards the end of the mat or even a small pillow, because we're just gonna wanna lift our ankles just slightly. So we wanna have a slight lift in the ankles and then a little bit more of a lift um, at the thighs. Definitely encourage a pillow for your head um, and have your favorite blanket handy. I got you. To cover up with, this will be a nice uh, long, Shavasana, but it's special because it's super supported. So the feeling we're going for is sort of floating up off the floor. So that's why having all the kind of extra blankets and things are handy. Um, yeah. So just to demo what it'll sort of look like, depending on your props, which I know two of you have all of the props. I'm not sure what Leslie has. Actually, I think you probably have all the props also. So that's, you should be able to see. So this is what we're going for. So we have the back of the thighs lifted and then uh, just slightly lifting the ankles. Make sure that that surface is even back there. Hands can go stacked on belly or just out to the sides, palms up or down, whatever will be comfortable for you for a uh, lengthy duration of just relaxation. Okay. It's okay. Yes. This is what we're supposed to be. We're gonna double. We're gonna double up too. To so get all situated, sort of settled. Taking a moment to reach out into your space with your awareness, if you choose to. Feel the temperature of the air again. Sound, sense, and vibration. And rest.
softly, asking your awareness. Come back into your body. Take a deep breath in together. Exhale fully. And keep the eyes closed here. We're gonna seal our practice while you're in your Shavasana posture. So there's no need to get up. I would offer only if you want to for all of us to place our left hand under our heart and then our right hand on top of the left. And feel that gentle pulsing and warmth. Let's seal this practice together by taking one very deep breath in, pulling in through the tip of the nose. And sigh it out from the mouth. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live a life of ease. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om peace, peace, peace. Namaste.